Dead. It's Night Gap at the Grateful Fed with Casey Easton. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Night Cap with the Grateful Fed with your host, Casey Easton. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. I hope everybody's getting drunk and stuff. Oh, yeah, claps. Yay! For you. Yay! The Grateful Fed is closing. That's why I'm wearing black. Up next, we have a local drummer and uh, just, a, just, a, just a swag of a character. Let's bring him up right now. Jeff Swayze, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Swayze. Where's your fries? Why didn't you bring your fries? You didn't want to I bring your fries? I'll them for later. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff Swayze. Who are you and what do you do, Jeff? Uh, you know, tinker, tailor, soldier, spy. Oh. A few of those things. Mm -hmm. I um, dabbled in a lot of stuff over the years. I used to sculpt and make molds. Uh, I work in machines. Uh, metal. Uh, I play music. Metallurgy. Yeah, I do some metallurgy. I, I do some. Uh, I do some electrochemical finishing with metal. I do things like I do machining. Uh, you do alchemy. Ever tried to make gold out of like wood and paper? And <laughs> well, no. I mostly try no. to make. I try to make gold out of just the the raw talents I have. But you know, it just really doesn't always. No. Work, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the real world. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you're a drummer, right? Yes, I uh, played here a number of times mm -hmm. uh, at the Grateful Fed with uh, Sugar Coated Killer. I'm putting my gum under the table because yeah, who cares? stick wall. Yeah, it's closing yeah, it's anyway. Closing anyways, nobody's ever going to scrape it off. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I played here a number of times with Sugar Coated Killers and Lipstick Bullet Kiss. Um, yeah, like over the past god, like ten years or so. Is that right? Yeah, we played. Uh, I probably played six or seven times. How here. long have you been drumming for? Oh, since I was about twelve, old enough to drive my parents insane. And, All right. Yeah. Started out with uh, dinner knives and uh, came home one day from uh, from school with a drum set that I'd put on layaway secretly yep. mm -hmm. that I didn't tell my parents about with my first job and then just came home one day with a drum kit. And of course, they were really, really impressed oh, with yeah. that. Oh yeah, they're like, love it, <laughs> great. Yeah, my dad always tried to make me play guitar. Here, son, play guitar. Yeah. It's a much quieter instrument. Plug your headphones into the amplifier and there you go. No, that more. didn't quite work out. What's your uh, what's your stage name, Jeff Swayze? Jeffy Hotlicks. It was Jeffy bestowed Hotlicks. upon me by Sevely Android. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. So Atlantis isn't his real last name, is it? Mm, no, it's not really. What is it? Smith Jones. Um, Smith Jones. How did you know? Uh -huh. So and you guys went on tour. You went on tour with Sevely. Yeah, we went across Canada ten years ago, two thousand eight. Uh, only yeah, almost eleven years ago now, mm -hmm. and just played um, pretty much every major spot across Canada. Every shithole and dive. Yeah, pretty divey places. Uh, I played, so I played a nice. place called Wash and Slosh. It was a laundromat. <laughs> oh yeah, with a bar. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, we played. Uh, we, yeah, we played in Regina. We played. Uh, we played at the, the Osborne Village Inn, the zoo in Winnipeg, a couple times. Um, Does Regina smell how it sounds? Anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> No, it actually doesn't. It's not a redhead. Um, and um, anyways, yeah, and we got as far as Montreal to figure out that one of the venues that we were supposed to play at yeah. was actually closed for renos. Nobody told us. <laughs> and the one night we actually did play in Montreal, we were at, um, I think it was Cafe Chaos. Yeah. And on the same night, it was the final game of the playoffs for the Montreal Canadiens. Of course, they haven't been that year. Yeah. And um, uh, across the road was Ministry with Meshuggah. And then just down the street was uh, Nashville Pussy and Reverend Horton Heat. Oh, wow. So our attendance was virtually nil. And I was like, I don't even want to play tonight. I want to go see these shows. <laughs> so after we played our show, like, we ended up making no money. And all the other bands that were no normal regulars at this bar yeah. actually pulled together a bunch of change and cash and just whatever. And like, here you go. Have some gas money so you can actually leave. Nice. So we virtually ended up playing for beer and charity. You know, 3,000 mile journey. Been right? there, done that. Oh, yeah, right? Uh, the Alma Combo thing. I told you about that. We played the Elma Combo in Toronto, and it was like there's a lineup down and, and around the corner. I was like, holy fuck, this is awesome, man. These guys and it really... wasn't for you. No, it was for Voivod. They're yeah, it was upstairs. for Voivod. Yeah, right. Yeah. In Germany, we, we played the night after Rammstein. So we, we showed up at this bar. It was total. So it was all like anti-climax. Yeah, the bartender <laughs> showed up like two hours later and one hungover waitress, and that was our entire show. But Rammstein was here last night. There's, nobody's coming. <laughs> I've played to some fairly empty rooms. I mean, we had, a, we had a couple of good shows at the Osborne Village Inn before it got closed down. Mm -hmm. uh, the Green Brothers uh, had ran it for a number of years there and they were really good to us they gave us a really huge room like a couple rooms and one of the big suites and mm -hmm. here's a pile of drink tickets and here's a bunch of food tickets for the for the restaurant and oh if you need to stay here a few extra days if you're not playing gigs go right ahead like really great That's and nice. then then i found out that they had actually 
written off my, my expenses to their taxes. And I got a notice from the feds that they were taxing me in Manitoba for provincial income. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. I'm like, I didn't play with a band then. <laughs> Jeff Swayze, you're thinking of the wrong no, Swayze. No, wrong, wrong Jeff Swayze. No, no, no. 200 of I think you're thinking about Patrick Swayze. Yeah, no, it's Jeffy Hodlix, that's my name. Yeah. Patrick Swayze. Yeah. Patrick. My dead cousin Patty. Yeah. Who's your cousin? <laughs> I don't have a cousin Patty. Oh. <laughs> what did you no, think of Roadhouse? Not anymore. Roadhouse was a great movie. Yeah, it was, actually. You no, know, well, I grew up in the 80s in uh, high school with, you know, last name Swayze. Yeah. So, of course, you know, I got all the nicknames like Dalton and Ghost and Roadhouse. Yeah. And, you know, and, yeah. Definitely. Have you seen Roadhouse? Oh yeah. Do you remember like, that, that was like the nobody puts baby in the corner. Well, uh, yeah, that was that was uh, dirty, <laughs> that was the that other was dirty way. dancing. <laughs> <Yeah>. But <laughs> the, one of the worst lines I've ever heard in any movie ever when they, when he was fighting that guy with the, with the bushy hair and the, the dangly earring. He's like, I used to guys like you in prison. Remember that? And I was like, what? That's <laughs> so aggressively homoerotic. Right, yeah, quite. Eh? Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, it's a very long time ago for me when I saw that movie. I think it was pretty much brand new when I saw it. So what do you do for work? I because you're a musician. So what do you do for work? What do you do? To well, pay you know, like I did make money as a musician occasionally, so I guess that qualifies me as a professional musician. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'm actually uh, a custom body jeweler and just general jeweler for mostly the piercing and body implant grade industry. Mm. So I sell to piercing shops and I provide them with the the, uh, the really high quality implant grade metals that they initially pierce you with. What metals are those? Um, it would be the federally certified ASTM titanium and surgical stainless steel. Mm -hmm. um, what were Wolverine's claws made out of? Uh, that was adamantium. Nice! That's something that doesn't actually truly exist. Fucking right. More or less called unobtainium, like half the parts from my old Austrian blades. <laughs> so, you know, I just I just waited 14 months for some replacement parts for one of my older machines, yep. but it's so accurate that you just really don't want to get rid of it. And I've just, I had a really super tough year and had a number of clients like, like, oh my God, my order's taking eight weeks. And I'm in an industry where the standard wait over the last year has been 16 to 20 weeks. Yeah. And so... But now we're talking about sad things. Yeah, exactly. Let's talk about happy things. But no, I, I, well, I let's talk about let's change it. Let's change to so some positive happy stuff. So the Grateful Fed is closing. How do you feel about that? <laughs> well, I'm a little disappointed. Like, I mean, I've always liked playing shows here. And yep. I mean, the food's been great. And I mean, checking out Ryan and just hanging out. And I've always known like a lot of the people that worked here and servers. It's like, yep. it's a Kelowna tradition. It is. You know, it's, it's pretty, it's kind of a, you know, it's a little, it's a little sad note for me here. Just, you, know, mm. you have to give me a second. That pineapple. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm actually kind of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually hopeful that something good will replace it. If, what? Okay, so what do you think is going to replace it? Well, hopefully another venue where people can play music live and um, something like that. Like, I mean, Kelowna's music scene has been eh, a little lacking over, like, I've been here since 95. Oh, the, the scene, yeah, it's just, you know. And it's, you know, it's been up and down. At certain times, there's been good places to play, and, you know, and, um, like, I've played here. I've played with the um, Fernandos and a number of places. Yeah. And, they, you know, they always treat the talent well, and mm -hmm. you always have a fun time. And yeah. there's always good crowds. So, I mean, you know, I would like to see something, you know, come in where just it's more... More music inclined? Yeah. Are they in the shop? <laughs> I know, but it seems seems to be kind of a... I like drum and bass. I don't like rock and roll. Well, yeah, it's more become like that. Yeah. So you're a metal guy. So <clears throat> I have a CRV. Can you attach a trailer hitch to it? Well, no, I, I, I'm a Durango kid. I, I do. I used to have a Civic, but, you know. Right. <laughs> I just stuff everything so in the view. So the great fence closing, trailer. how do you feel about that? Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you a question. Are you or are you not related to Patrick Swayze? The official family story is, yeah. he's my grandfather's brother's grandson through oh, second yeah. marriage. Right. Um, then that marriage, he had, uh, they had Patrick and his brother Don. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Don Swayze has actually been in a couple of movies and episodes of The X-Files. Mm -hmm. um, and he's kind of got more of the hard drug face. You know, he's definitely not quite as popular as I Patrick was. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but yeah, no, uh, that's my sister had done a genealogical thing uh, to actually sort of prove this story that my grandmother told us. Yeah. And it does come out to be true. Like, nice. it would, it would have been my third cousin. Yeah. So. Sweet. You see my nephew, he's a spitting image of him. Does, does he have the mullet? Uh, no, he doesn't do the mullet. But if you were to actually see a picture of my nephew, you'd be like, God damn, 
Oh, that's Patrick Sweet. Does he drive around like, I had the time of my life. <laughs> yeah, I know. He did that when he came to visit me recently. Yeah. What do you love about Kelowna? What do you love about this fine city of ours? I love Kelowna because of its just location to nature, the lake. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a, it's a small feeling community. Yeah. Like I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, so it's a steel town. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of rough characters, you know, a lot of grubby parts of town and whatnot. And then yeah. I ended up in Calgary for about 13 years. And it became, from when I moved there um, till when I left, quite a huge city with a whole lot of people. And it just became too much. Yeah. So I had a girlfriend at the time. She goes, well, why don't we move to Kelowna? I'd never been to Kelowna. And I just packed up and moved here. Nice. I looked at it on a postcard, and I saw a sandy beach with a lake, and I'm like, sold. Yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up in Ontario where there was, like, Lake Erie and there was Lake Ontario. You could always go to the beach you know, yeah. pretty much any time. Yeah. So, so this is great for me. Like, I've always lived within throwing distance to, to the lake. I like lakes better than I like oceans. You know why? There's no fucking sharks in the lake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, what do you hate about the sound? What would you change if you could? Uh, well, you know... Don't get me started. <laughs> um, I, I would like to see, actually, like we were talking about, a little bit more of a music scene for, for local talent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the sore spots I think I've had with this town for quite a number of years is just that, you know, there's a little less recognition of the good talent that comes from here. Yep. And it, generally, if it's, it's Kelowna-born talent, it needs to go elsewhere to become recognized. That, well, that's a fact. It, um, probably across Canada, honestly. Yeah, pretty much. What did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a pilot. <laughs> Did you didn't do it? Well, I mean, I lived near Milton where they actually train the RCF pilots for, mm -hmm. you know, like the, the Snowbirds and for the, the Canadian Armed Forces. Yep. And I begged and begged my parents to put me into air cadets. But unfortunately, they just could not afford to Those fuckers. There, right? Just, well, you know, grew up in a poor family, grew up in the steel town, you know, dad yep. did drywall, you know, mom's a factory worker. So it makes sense you're a drummer and a rock so and roll So I'm a drummer, guy. rock and roll yeah, guy. You know, I, kinda... I work with metal, came from a steel town, so I pretty much, you know, I followed into a sort of a tradition there, I guess. Yeah. Do you do any impressions? Have any special talents? Hidden talents? Uh, well, I can I can mimic a lot of different characters. Do it. Do it. Like, a uh, well, you know, the Ren Stevie. Like, Stevie, yeah. you fat, bloated idiot. Uh, hi, oh, hi, oh, hi, hey, man. Ren, how are you doing? Or, uh, hey, I'm Subway Android. <laughs> 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 That's one of my favorite ones. He even likes that impression. <laughs> Subway, he's fucked. Now, did you like the answer he gave you on the interview? What, about what? About uh, how he was born? I can't remember. I... Uh, he opened up the Christmas present. Christmas morning and he was a little boy. Oh yeah, <laughs> or whatever it was. Like I mean, this guy is hilarious because like everything that literally, if you ask him like the most common sense question, you're yeah. gonna get the most non sexual. I know. Answer. I was like, well, like, what's your name? He's like, 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 like. Let me think. You know, I gotta think about this one. Yeah. Is this like the skill testing question? Sorry, I'm so hungover. That's okay, mate. Jeff Swayze, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing a short set. <laughs> All right, How's about 15 minutes? That's good enough. You got her. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. We're going to take a break again because I need some soup or something. Nightcap at the Grateful Fed with Casey Easton. Reserve your seats now.